If we haven't met yet, I'm Jackie, and we're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. So hopefully you have all your gear right there in front of you. We have um, some things that you'll need for the art project today. But our biggest goal is to have a good time. So <laughs> I am so glad you're joining me. So how many of you have uh, actually seen a real live peacock before? Have you been to uh, maybe a zoo or somebody's farm who owned a peacock? Um, I, I have actually seen maybe one or two in my life. And then I've seen lots of pictures and videos of them. And actually I'm gonna be sharing a couple of pictures and videos with you today. So um, that should be fun. And gonna tell a story to you as well that is all about the legend of the peacock. And I'll give you a little bit of explanation before I show a video that um, I made for you that is called The Legend of the Peacock and where the peacock actually, according to Greek mythology, was created. Um, the peacock is a beautiful, beautiful bird. And um, if you haven't seen one, you know, be sure to check them out online. And when we can go back to zoos again, be sure to stop by the uh, where the peacocks live in the zoo and go meet one. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. We have uh, about two more minutes. And... We'll continue to wait till exactly three o'clock and Curly is outside, but you probably can hear him fussing because we're not there with him and he doesn't like to be outside by himself. Curly is our dog. Uh, Curly's four years old now and he's a bit of a brat. <laughs> I don't think he's a brat on purpose. He just gets into trouble and he's very nosy and uh, usually uh, enjoys tearing up things like empty boxes or paper roll towels uh, and toilet paper is one of his favorites. So Curly is uh, definitely a handful, but we love him. He's a, a golden doodle. So do you have a pet as well, a dog or a cat or maybe something else? So has anybody commented, Max? Do we have somebody's, some, some, a couple of people are here with me. So let me know you're here. Say hi. I want to say hi back to you. And thanks for being here. All right. It is right at three o'clock. So we're going to go ahead and start. And let, let me, and start. Let me show you what you're going to be needing. You'll need some blank paper and this is actually what I get off of a what's called a paint pad and it is a textured watercolor paper and it's kind of thick so it keeps the water from saturating the paper and kind of having it tear up on you. The other thing that you will need is a pencil and you're going to be sketching um, your drawing out first before we outline it with a Sharpie. And then the second thing you'll be doing is using your watercolor markers or if you have watercolor paints that you want to use instead of the color markers, that'll work just fine too. I'm going to be using the markers and then once I get the marker um, ink or the color down that I want, I'm going to dip my paintbrush in just plain clear water and then spread it over 
the marks that I made with my marker and get the color to spread around by rubbing it and kind of dragging it over the space where I want the color to go. Okay, so you have all that ready? First, I want to tell you about the story of the legend of the peacock. The peacock is, as I was said a minute ago, is a beautiful bird that has iridescent feathers. That means they kind of glow and look like they might even shine in the dark and very bright colors. Although I have seen a white peacock, it is beautiful, but most of them are beautiful colors and the blue and green color family, maybe a little yellow mixed in there and some other colors. But let me tell you how this story began. And then again, I have a video to share with you. The peacock was a bird that became very famous during the time hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago when people did not understand the science behind what happened in nature or just in life in general. So the Greeks would make up stories to explain some of these scientific things, again, that they didn't understand. So they wanted it to make sense for them to understand. So they would just make up a story. And that's exactly what happened with the story of the peacock. So you can decide if this is something that's real or something that's not necessarily real. So let me share. Um, oh, and one other thing I wanted to tell you about the legend of the peacock and Greek mythology is that um, the peacock really hadn't existed before this time of the story taking place. And again, the Greeks made up this story of how it happened. And that legend lives on today. So let me share my screen, the sound. Okay, did you catch all of that? Would you like to see it one more time? I know it moves really fast. It's just 42 seconds long. So let's watch one more time. And I want you to concentrate on who are the main characters in this story and see if all the places where you see peacocks. So let's watch it one more time. Okay. All righty. Who were the main characters? There was Zeus, who was the king or the god of earth in Greek mythology. There was his wife, 
who was Hera, H-E-R-A, and Hera actually had a protector, and he was the man with the hundred eyes who always watched over Hera. Hera, do you remember what his name was? It was Argus. Well, Argus never took his eyes off of Hera. His job was to keep watch over her at all times. While some eyes slept, other eyes stayed awake. But Zeus became very, very angry with Hera and decided he was going to lull Argus into a sleep with all of his eyes sleeping at the same time. And he did that and he killed Argus, and Hera's reaction was she was heartbroken, and she decided she wanted to honor Argus, and what did she create to honor Argus? The peacock, and where did Argus' eyes go on the peacock? into his feathers. So that's what we're going to be concentrating on today by creating our own version of the peacock. And I'll explain a little more as we uh, get started on our artwork today, why I chose to share the story of the peacock with you and why we're painting a peacock today. So let's get started. Get your pencil and your paper out and I'm going to change cameras so you can see exactly what I'm going to be doing. Okay. Let me make sure we still have sound. Looks like we do. Okay. Uh, my, my husband, Max, helped me out a little bit and drew the feet. But the very first thing we want to draw, and I'm going to go ahead and do it in marker so you can see it better. We're going to come about, oh, maybe a third of the way down the page, about right here. And we're going to draw the peacocks head as a circle. So we'll come around that way, then we'll come around this way, and then we'll stop. So we have almost a complete circle for the peacock's head. Okay, you got that done so far? Now, we're going to draw his body and just watch a minute. I think his body looks a little bit like a bowling pin. The shape goes in a big curve that's kind of a little bit of an S curve that's backwards. And we come around and curve out for his body and then keep going across the bottom curve out for the body again, then come back in and back up to his neck. Okay, there's his body. And actually, I forgot to show you the drawing, oops, upside down, of what he's going to look like finished. So there's the peacock. And let's get back to our drawing. Okay, you have his body on there now. Now, Draw his feet, draw two little legs coming out from his body, kind of um, one on each side so he's a little bit balanced on his body. And then his feet. So give him some feet, like webbed feet. And then the other foot. Okay. Now our bird has a body a head, legs, and two feet. What is he missing now? Well, he needs to have a beak. And this beak is shaped like a sideways V. So you can just put a big old V right there and have his beak. 
And let's give him an eye before we start adding on his feathers. So make a big circle, maybe just above and over to the left of his beak a little bit. And then we'll give him maybe a little slanty eye look just to make him kind of exotic. And then we'll give him like a little sparkle in his eye there. Okay. Now the next thing, and I'm not sure what the technical name for these are, but the peacocks have a little headdress at the top of their head that looks kind of like this. One slanty line going to the left, one that kind of goes up straight, and then another one that goes out to the right. And then there's like a little ball at the end of it. So draw your little peacock headdress. And there can be as many of those as you want. I drew three on mine. But again, remember, your peacock doesn't have to look like mine. Your peacock can be totally your own creation. And that goes for the color, too. So you, when we get to the colors, you can decide. All righty. Are you... You ready to move on and we'll start with the feathers. Okay, you want to start with your pencil in case you need to make any corrections. I have my eraser here in case I need to go back and erase any lines that weren't exactly right the first time. And I have a couple of those, so I'm going to erase those and then move the eraser crumbs off my paper so they don't mess up my drawing and painting. Okay, the first feather is going to go at the top, and you're going to go down from his little crown on the top of his head and make a big kind of a skinny U shape that looks like this, almost touching the top and then back around to the other side of his head, just on the right side of his little peacock crown. Okay, let me outline that for you in black so you can see better. Okay, there's his first feather. Now, on the next feather, we're going to go to the right side of the peacock, and just a little bit down on the curve and start our second feather that will do the same thing. It's kind of like a big U shape that comes in after it curves around just below his nose and it curves back in, or his beak technically, I guess we should call it. And let me Put that in black so you can see it better. Okay. Now the next one is going to start at about the same place on the previous feather. Come up and around. Big U shape. Maybe about the same length as the previous one. And curve down and back in, and again, I'll outline this for you in black so you can see it better. And we keep going with another one. So we want to make this one just about the same length, maybe a little bit shorter than that one. And then one more at the bottom, and we'll curve around and bring it back in. One of the things I was going to share with you, and I'll give you a few minutes to catch up here in case I got ahead of you. One of the things about peacocks is that only the male is actually a peacock. Peacock 
females or pea fowl is what they're both called f o w l pea fowl though the lady peacocks or the girls are called pea hens and the males are called peacocks and the males are always the bright beautiful radiant colors and that's so he can attract the peahens to him and they will take notice of how beautiful he is and want to have babies with him <laughs> so now if you want to add one more feather down there you certainly can do that um if it looks like that space and actually i think mine looks like it could use one more i'm going to add one more to the bottom of mine and do it in black so you can see it a little better okay now what we want to do on the other side is the same thing and try to make them at about the same size as the ones on the right side so let's start up at the top go out around curve back in and down kind of below his neck mine was a little off there i'm going to erase that and do mine better on the second attempt i want it to come down just a little further to match the other side okay now I'll do mine in black Okay, mine's a little fatter than on the other side, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to do the next one. Again, make it about the same size as the other one. Mine's a little bit skinnier. Perfect. Doesn't matter. We want it to be what we want it to look like. All right, I'm going to add another one and make this one a little bit longer because mine are getting a little small. It's getting a little lopsided. And then I'm going to make a really long one as the last one. And by the way, do you think peacocks are able to fly? Some people think peacocks aren't able to fly because they have all these heavy, heavy feathers that can be as long as maybe six feet in length. And can you imagine how heavy that would be and what it would take for a peacock to get off the ground with the weight behind them well after we finish our peacocks i have a bit another quick little video to show you that a peacock does fly and even though they can fly they can't fly very far because that weight of their feathers is really 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 heavy Okay, and when you finish all your feathers, if you have eraser marks, I mean pencil marks that you want to erase, go back and do that before we actually start putting in the color. How's it going? Am I going too fast for you? I'll wait a couple of minutes for you to catch up here, okay? Any comments, Max? I'll get all my eraser marks off of here. Does it sound okay? Yep. Okay. All right. Now we're going to get out our markers just as soon as you're ready. And the first color I'm going to get out is my orange marker because we're going to do his beak and his feet and orange or again whatever color you want we're just going to fill that all the way in with our markers okay and i'm going to do his feet and his legs and if you get too close to the black if your sharpie isn't a waterproof one 
it may smear a little bit. So try not to touch the black if you can help it because it will run together. You're getting his beak and his feet done. Just fill that all in. What other color could you make his beak or feet? It could be yellow. It could be brown. It could be black. It could be tan. Or it could be any color you wanted it to be, couldn't it? If we're talking about mythology. And by the way, do you think something, a story from mythology is true? <laughs> what do you think? Probably not, because that's why it's called mythology. Do you know the word myth, M-Y-T-H? A myth usually means that it was a made-up story to explain something, and it comes from the word mythology. So, all righty. Now, I think we're, what I'm going to suggest we do next is its color. Now, I think it would be kind of interesting to mix blue and green kind of together and then blend them together with the paintbrush and see what that looks like. But again, you make your peacock whatever color you want it to be. I'm going to start just kind of sketching. It doesn't have to be filled in solid, remember, because we're going to blend it with the paintbrush and the water. And again, this is where if you have watercolors and you'd rather use your watercolors to do this, that's just fine. That'll work too. Oops, I just covered part of his eye. I didn't mean to do that. All right, I'm going to go back with the green and add some green in there too. I think that will be interesting to see what it does. And if you don't want to add two colors, or if you want to add more than two colors, you can. I'm going to keep going on his body down here. All right, and then I'm going to add some blue down here, too. Looks kind of interesting, doesn't it? We'll see how it turns out once I put the water on it and start spreading pigment of the color around. Okay, now I'm ready to take my paintbrush and blend this together. And again, if your Sharpie wasn't a permanent or, or water resistant, be careful when you get around the black lines with your paintbrush with water on it. I kind of like the blue and the green mixed together. What colors did you use? I hope you'll share your pictures of your painting with us. We would like to put them on the Planet Einstein Art for Kids Facebook page and show everybody what you did. Okay, getting this body painted in. Just kind of Rub your brush when it starts getting too dry, when your brush gets out, out of water and it's too dry, then it won't blend the colors very well anymore. So keep dipping it in the water as often as you need to re-wet it. And then you can go back over and fill in any spots that you miss that need the color spread out a little more. Okay, all righty. Um, now we need to go back with our pencil and our marker because we are going to add something very, very important. What's missing from our peacock at this point? The eyes. Remember, Argus was the great protector and had a hundred eyes 
we need to put our eyes on our peacock. And you can put as many eyes as you want. Um, I put mine at the end. You can put yours wherever you want. Make an oval or a circle and with another circle in the center so it looks like an eye. So I'll do that in marker so you can see it better. Okay, and then do, again, at least one on every feather. All right, I'm going to go back and outline all of mine again with the marker so you can see it. One thing to be careful of as you do this, don't lay your hand or let your hand rest on your wet peacock because it will smear it and you'll have it not only all over your hand, I think I already have some, on that, but you will um, mess up your picture. So try to just remember not to put your hand in the wet paint. And if you need to hold your hand up off the paper a little bit to avoid putting it there. Okay, I have all my eyes on mine now. And I need to decide what color I want his feathers to be. And I think I'm going to go with a mix of yellow and green and see how that looks. So again, you make yours whatever color you want. Um, ah, but one thing I think I will do first and suggest that you do first, because you don't want to have to lay your hand on the feathers to do the eyes. Let's do the eyes first, okay? I think I'm going to make my eyes Let's see, do I have a purple? I don't have a purple in here, I don't believe. So, oh, yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to make mine purple and something else. So, I'm going to start with purple on the outside of the eye. Let me see if I can smear that around with my brush. And you know something else that will help keep you from having to lay your hand in the wet places that you just painted is to turn your paper another direction. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second because I'm going to turn mine to do the next uh, after this one. I'm going to turn it around this way so I can reach it better. And that way my hand is laying over the spot where it's dry and not where it's wet. And one of the things that I wanted to let you know about that we're going to be doing with every lesson from now on, even when we move this into the kids art club, is we're going to have a story with every one of our art lessons and the piece of art that we will be creating will have something to do with that story. And that might be all kinds of different things. For example, um, the story of the octopus and we'll be drawing an octopus and I will let you know um, some really interesting things in a story about the octopus. We'll be doing characters from children's books and a story that goes along with that piece of art. Sometimes it will be that actual story that's in the book or sometimes it will be another story completely different. And we'll be learning things, for example, um, the ladybug. We'll be painting some ladybugs, and you'll learn uh, why is it called a ladybug and why does she have um, red dots 
on her or black dots on her. Um, so anyway, um, stories always make it much more fun and interesting. Oh, and I have some, you know, it's interesting. A lot of birds, particularly, and a lot of insects, um, the male of that species is usually what we think of as the pretty one. Um, and, you know, in human beings, we don't necessarily think of the male as the pretty one. We usually associate that with the female, don't we? So it's kind of backwards in a lot of the animal kingdom. And think about the lion. The lion male is the one that has the beautiful mane, uh, that gorgeous tuft of hair around his face, the king of the jungle. Right? <laughs> so he's the pretty one. So it's just kind of a phenomenon in nature, isn't it? And they want to attract the female to them. So they do everything they can to get noticed. And, you know, one thing that I thought was really interesting, all the pictures of the that I showed you in the slideshow, um, the peacock at the very end was given the very um, important honor of pulling Hera's chariot. Did you notice how many pictures there were? And her chariot was covered with different images of peacocks. And of course, there were the peacocks there that were actually pulling the chariot. But Greek mythology has hundreds and hundreds of stories that explained things that were confusing to people at that time. And then we want the center of the eye to be another color. And I'm not sure yet what I want that to be. I think I either want it to be blue or yellow, maybe. And again, whatever color you want to make yours is just fine. And I'm going to color that in all the way because it's too small to go back in with the brush without making a mess. And since it's a small space, that won't take up too much marker. And if all your paint isn't dry yet where you're laying your hand, you know, be real careful with that. I think mine's pretty dry. I probably am getting some paint on the side of my hand, but it's washable. Press down on your brush with it real wet to get it to blend in. Move that color around a little bit. Okay, one. I'm going to go back to my green one. Remember, you don't need to fill it all the way in with the markers. You can just do the scribbly, you know, spreading the color around. I'm going to do two while I'm going to try to keep my hand off of where it's wet. Be following along with me. And again, if you're not exactly where I am, that's okay. If you need to finish it after we go off the live, that's okay. Remember, I want you to share it with us. The brush is really, really wet, so I'll try to not lay my hand in it again. <laughs> Get that blended. We still have a lot of feathers to go. Some of my favorites for Dr. Seuss books. I love Dr. Seuss. I have a um, great niece who is six and she loves to read and loves to have um, art classes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was hoping she could be with us today. I'm going to get her on as my guest um, hopefully next week and bring her on regularly because she really loves art. Curious George was always one of my favorite ones. <laughs> and uh, the night moon, where the wild things are. Uh, 
I read lots and lots of books. And um, when I was a teacher, I would read books to my classes, even my sixth graders that I taught. Uh, every day after lunch, we would have a time devoted to um, usually a chapter at each reading of the book after our lunch was over. Green, three more to go. And one of the things that I want to let you know is that next week we will have one more free lesson. But if you're ready to sign up for weekly lessons, then I put the link for you to do that. And those will start on um, the first Monday in July. So if you want to get started and already, because I'm going to limit the class size. So if you want to be sure to get in, go ahead and enroll in the Planet Einstein Kids Art Club. Um, parents or grandparents, this is, um, again, a great way to instill the love of art into your children or grandchildren because it's going to be fun. They're going to learn a lot of things about art and lessons with stories that I'll be sharing with them and some basic techniques in terms of art, how to create shapes, colors, um, and just having fun with it and learning that there's all kinds of different art and we'll be talking about some of the masterpieces and creating our own version of some of the masterpieces. And our biggest goal is that it's going to be a good time and you're going to have some beautiful pieces of art that could even be frameable. You may have some that you go, wow, you know, this is incredible. And we've got to put this in a frame and display it, put it up on the wall. And then to just kind of give it a finishing touch, I'm going to go back through with my pink and give it a colorful edge with the side of my marker. I'm going to put down some pigment that I can take my brush and blend it into all those spaces. Okay, my little artist, how are you doing? There we go. Let me turn him back right side up. I have some wet spots on here, but that's okay. All right. I think I like the yellow best as the background because it blended better. Although the orange turned out pretty well. The pink and purple didn't spread real well, but that's okay. So are you happy with your creation? You keep, if you're not finished yet, just keep going till you get it finished and then take a picture of it and share it with us, okay? I'm going to come back on the screen with you. Okay, my little artist, and come back next week. We'll have another free lesson, but if you want to go ahead and sign up uh, so you be sure you get in the Planet Einstein Kids Art Club, and that stands for Peacock, Planet Einstein, P-E, Kids Art Club, P-E-K-A-C, Peacock. So <laughs> this is our Peacock for Planet Einstein Kids Art Club. Thanks for being here, everybody. Bye.